new episode of Mobicon Academy Shorts, a series of short videos where we look at a specific part of the Dutch mobility system and try to explain the features that make this work in the Netherlands and how they can be translated overseas. In today's episode, we're going to look at arterial roadway design. From a Dutch perspective, uh, overseas or international arterial roads are generally oversized, too wide, too hard to cross uh, compared to their Dutch counterparts. Uh, because the Dutch have really focused their arterial, arterial roadway design on flow. Uh, they are reducing the side friction, reducing the number of intersections and really trying to maintain a, a slow but consistent flow of vehicles while using only two lanes of traffic. Uh, to look at one of the arterial roadways, we have an example from the city of or the town of Naaldwijk uh, in the west of the country, where we filmed a two-lane arterial over a, a section of one or two kilometers um, using our 360-degree camera. If we look at the roadway design, the first thing that we that we see is that we use a lot of roundabouts instead of traffic lights. Traffic lights really slow down cars, cause uh, a lot of crashes and injuries. Uh, roundabouts are significantly safer, but also have a much more consistent flow. And keeping that flow going, making people slow down, look for other uh, roadway users, look for crossing traffic, but still being able to maintain uh, their, their, their pace um, really helps with the, the flow on the arterial roadways. The second thing that stands out is the width. Um, Dutch arterial streets are generally a lot narrower than their American counterparts, not just in number of lanes, but also in the width of lanes. Uh, this one, for example, has about 3.2 meters per lane, uh, but that's from the curb face to curb face. So American roads, they, they do 10 or 12 feet of roadway, which is 3.4 meters, uh, but then they add about a foot, 30 centimeters for um, the gutter, where the stormwater drain is, and that really changes how wide the street feels. Narrower, narrow, narrower arterial means a slower arterial, but still a consistent uh, flow of traffic. Then as you can see, not that many driveways. Um, and because they only have two lanes of traffic, there is enough space for a planted verge between the roadway and the, and the separated bikeway. Then we get to another roundabout, and you can see we had to slow down a little, but we navigate the, the roundabout um, slowly but steadily, no stopping. So better for emissions, feels better for the driver because they didn't have to stop needlessly for a red light, and they can continue on their way. Then one aspect that's quite uh, an important feature, the, the floating bus stop. Um, the, by having only two lanes of traffic, uh, you have enough space to create a proper bus boarding island. Pedestrians can stand, disembark or embark out of the way of the bikeway. Uh, there's enough space for people to wait and maneuver, enough space for a shelter, uh, and the bikes just go around the back. This also means that the bus has to stop in the vehicle lane, uh, which means that the cars have to wait behind it, but that gives full priority to the bus. When boarding and disembarking is completed, they can just continue on their way without having to wait for traffic to stop for them. Then probably one of the biggest bonuses of a narrower but more continuous arterial is the crossing distance for pedestrians. Uh, the risk for pedestrians is obviously there when they're exposed to car traffic. And by having only two lanes instead of four lanes, the crossing distance is only three meters per lane, uh, which means that your exposure to car traffic is only three seconds at a time, which is not that long. Especially if you compare it to a four lane arterial in the US that needs a lot of bells and whistles, flashing lights and um, other engineering tricks to try and make it safe. Well, this inherently is safer for, for everybody because it's such a short exposure time to the, to the traffic. And that's a quite a common uh, feature in Dutch arterial roadways. Um, so while overtaking here is not allowed, it's still technically possible. So for example, emergency services, they could go around, uh, go around the traffic and, and overtake. As you can see, the, the, the number of pedestrian crossings is relatively frequent, but um, none of them are actually signalized or have any type of uh, flashing beacon or anything in it. Then we get to a section where the median is hard. Um, so overtaking is not possible in this uh, in this instance. Once for the, for safety because it's on a on a big bend, but also what it does it creates uh, traffic bunches bun traffic bunches up behind the slowest road user. So if one person drives 10 kilometers less than the speed limit, for example, everybody else needs to do the same because overtaking is not possible, and that creates large gaps in traffic, which makes the whole road easier to cross for pedestrians in the, the long term. Turning traffic can pull into that um, median island uh, leftover space, uh, 
and wait out of the stream of traffic to turn left. If you do have a lot of left turning vehicles, you can imagine that that uh, adds up pretty quickly. And that's why there is a, a, an intersection treatment we call the, the kidney bean or the Dutch left, where you create a kind of an oblong shaped uh, hybrid roundabout typology, uh, where you create space for people to, to pull out of the, the traffic stream as per, per this example. Um, to turn left into the side street. The same happens on the opposite side, so traffic just rotates around each other and while yielding to the traffic on the through road. This is a highly effect effective uh, intersection typology, doesn't take as much space as a roundabout and still gives you a lot of those safety benefits. So that's a nice way of uh, redesigning your intersections for safety. And then we carry on. As you can see, the, the median is flexible, it gets wider or narrower. And that means you have more space for green, for rainwater absorption, for trees, uh, or for any other type of street furniture you want to use. So those are just a few of the key elements of Dutch roadway design that we, that we can use, that we can translate to an, uh, an American or a, any other uh, international context, and that can really benefit the safety, the flow, and the emissions profile of all of your arterial roads. Thanks for watching, and see you at the next episode. If you like this video, and if you think, what can Mobicon do for me? Please go to mobicon.com or follow us at Instagram, LinkedIn or Twitter.